Hello, and welcome to the Modcast. As always, I'm Stevie, and this episode I'm joined by Chizai236. Hello, I am a person. And the current score is 12 9 to Pokemon, and this time we're discussing the 22nd episodes Davis Cries Wolfmon and The Superhero Secret. So let's start off with Davis Cries Wolfman. Did you watch the recap for the episodes that you missed last time? Yes, I forgot what it was though. You missed basically what's the end of Ken's arc. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they just defeated the Emperor. Basically one of the best episodes. <laughs> and again, you weren't on for it. So sorry about that. I'm never here for plot. I am strictly a filler co-host. It's just bad timing. I literally made a note on the Pokemon one, too. Of course, they're headed to another no-name town. I can never be on Moncast for plot episodes. It's strictly forbidden. Filler only. So, we have the recap of the last episode, which was really depressing. And then the hairs with this episode, which isn't much better. It does start off with some cute scenes with the in-training Digimon in the real world. And the kids doing random school things. Yeah, like science and literature. Back basketball. I don't even know what Kari was doing, like ballet. She was doing cheerleading? It might have been cheerleading. She was dancing. Oh, I guess maybe they were doing, or maybe they're doing like gymnastics or something. Eh, that would make sense. Because gymnastics is for girls. Yeah, notice there were no girls playing basketball and no guys doing gymnastics. Yes, that is absolutely how it works. I've been to high school. It's just girls do netball, boys do football. That's it. So Davis and TK are playing basketball and Davis is being his usual awful self. He complains a lot about his team not passing, but we never once see him pass himself. He's basically just a massive hypocrite. He, yeah, he is. He, he wants to win and show up TK. So, of course, he's just like... Give me the ball so I can do the things. He just wants to try and one-up TK somehow in front of Kari. Yeah, which doesn't work at all, because of course it doesn't. Because it's Davis trying to do it. That said, though, everyone is really mean to Davis, like, like unnecessarily mean to him. Like, they're rooting for him to lose. Debbie Vemon's still on his side. The creature made to be on his side is on his side. Yes, great. Wonderful. <laughs> Fair point. So yeah, if we see everyone doing these activities and they group up to go back to the digital world. And they're basically on cleanup duty because they didn't know what to do in the digital world anymore. Yeah, because the Emperor wrecked everything. So they got to fix everything. And I guess that involves manual labor and not like coding or something. Or just like click and drag to recycle bin. <laughs> But then you'd accidentally delete a Digimon, and then what do you do? It's like, oh no, undo, undo. And so the digital world can be neatly split up into five areas, which were, I think, beach, lake, woods, uh, swampland, and farmland, something like that. It's a very small digital world, apparently, because all five of them can cover it. Yeah, I thought that that was weird. I wonder if it was just like a specific area that got kind of destroyed. Later when other stuff is going on, all of the kids are run to. And it's like, wait, how far away are, is everyone? Like, I guess not that far. So it must just be like a specific area. Yeah, it's kind of like either the digital world is very small or the Digimon Emperor didn't really do as much damage as we thought he did. Like, he only hit a small part of the, the world at all. Yeah, it's gotta be one or the other. Or Digimon just didn't think about it. That's the other option. True. It's probably that one. Most likely. So the Digikids do some Digichars, and that's the episode. Did you see? Did you hear? Did you know these chores were coming? I watch anime to get away from my chores. But the cleanup is so boring that at one point TK basically says something along the lines of there must be something bigger out there for us to fight because goddamn this cleanup is boring. This can't be why we're here. Right. Because there's supposed to be a purpose to them, you know, being in the digital world. And it's like TK's the only one that's like, you know, this is a little fishy. There might be something going on that we're not aware of. 
Yeah, Tika just somehow goes, wait a second, maybe there's something else evil out there. Yeah, maybe maybe there's a reason why we haven't been booted out of the digital world permanently yet. Or it could just be that the gate's open. <laughs> well, the gate's been this whole weird thing of just like, why is it open? Can only can open it. So then, yeah, that's kind of what TK is trying to figure out. It's like, well, is there a reason it's still open? Yeah, and that's kind of as far as that goes for this episode. And then for some reason, all the Digimon around TK and Kari just disappear. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know why that was a thing. Where did they go? <laughs> so after this conversation, it does go back to Davis and Vimon, who are the central focus of the episode. Buckle in, everyone. It's a Davis episode. Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Nothing better than a Davis episode. <laughs> no, what? I get such a good draw on these Wancast episodes. It's lovely. <laughs> How could this happen to me? <laughs> I made my mistakes. So basically, what Davis wants to do is make Vimon Digivolve because he thinks that will impress Kari because TK is a Digivolving Digimon. Why can't Davis have one? He's just jealous of TK because TK is better than him. TK has already done this for a while, Davis. Of course his Digimon's going to be stronger than yours. And you've put no work into like making Vimon stronger because the literal whole point of this episode is basically like the whole Skull Greymon thing, but without that consequence. Yeah, like, there's no stuffing them with food or anything like that. Instead, he just, like, sets up all these weird schemes to try and get Vimon to Digivolve. One very funny thing, though, is, like, so the first scheme is, um, Numamon and Red Vegemon get into this big costume all together and, like, show up like it's a scary monster and, brah, it's gonna eat Davis. Vimon, you better Digivolve. But it's funny because when I saw it, I, I have no memory of this episode. And so when I saw it, I was like, what Digimon is that? <laughs> That's not Waru Manzemon. What is that? I forgot about the whole dressing up thing as well. It was so weird. And then when they all fell out, I was like, ah, oh, now, I, now I remember what's going on. <laughs> but at least Davis does compliment them on the costume. That's one good thing he does. Forget betraying your best friend. You know, you gotta compliment that Numamon costume. Oh yeah, absolutely. The costume didn't work to make Vimon Digivolve. And I just want to say again, it's a stupid idea, because what has Vimon got to do with Davis's quality as a person? I don't know. Literally nothing. Yep. Davis is just stupid. Yep. Attempt number one to get Vimon to Digivolve to impress Gatamon and Kari. Because Vimon fancies Gatamon now. That's a new thing. And that one fails. And attempt number two is to lure Vimon onto a rope bridge and then basically snap the rope bridge. 10 out of 10. Good Davis plan. Not only does it put them both in danger, it also vandalizes a perfectly good rope bridge, which someone has to repair. So, good job, Davis. It's almost like it's the whole reason they went there, was to fix things, not make them worse. And again, it doesn't work. Vimon doesn't digivolve, and they both get swept away by the the water. At various points, my notes just say, Davis, you so dumb. You crazy. So yeah, Davis is just like, Vimon, why won't you digivolve? And Vimon's just like, well, bleh. <laughs> I honestly think that Vimon is the smarter one of the pair. Oh, definitely, yeah. I mean, Davis is set in a pretty low bar. It's like the lowest of bars. <laughs> Vimon just has to step over it. <laughs> So they make the way Vimon says things a bit silly, but the things he says are still correct. They just gave him a weird mannerisms, yeah. It's like, even though he sounds a bit dumb, he's actually smarter than Davis. So I think we're already like 12 minutes through it. Not much important happens. There's lots of just like little snippets of cleanup that's a bit boring. Yeah. But after this scheme, TK and Kari are basically just like, oh, Davis, you're so silly. And just don't get involved. <laughs> just let Davis carry on. Yeah. Wait, do they see Davis before they run into Tortamon? No, because like TK and Kari have a conversation about it before Davis comes by, I think. Where TK's like, so Davis is trying to get Vimon to Digivolve. Are you sure? I thought that they broke the bridge. They ended up in the water, got out of the water. Then the rocks fell. Then Tortamon got hit. Then Tortamon chased them. Yeah. And then TK and Kari see Davis and Vimon getting chased by Tortamon are like, Eh, they'll handle it. It's fine. They're silly. They'll they'll figure it out. It's fine. Yeah, that was a good summary of all the bits I've missed. So yeah, we're back up to speed now, with Davis and Vimon running away from Totemon. Because Totemon got angry. 
because rocks. So yeah, TK and Kari don't get involved. Because they're the worst. No, because they're the best. <laughs> I guess. It's pretty, like, cold of them to be just like, oh, Davis is in trouble? Eh, they'll figure it out. They always figure it out. It's fine. Davis brought this upon himself with his dumb schemes. If your friend was, like, running around a cliffside, and then they slipped, and then they were, like, hanging on the edge for their life, would you be like, well, you did it to yourself, so you figure it out? No, you would save them! I mean, it depends, like, is the cliff gonna crumble if I try and save them? Like, will I be in danger as well? Let's assume that you can save them. Padamon and Godamon could easily beat a Tortamon. You can easily save them, and you're just choosing not to. Yeah, but I don't judge him for it, like... This is Davis. This isn't just a friend. This is Davis. I guess, but still, aren't they supposed to be, like, pure-hearted and everything? Like, come on, you guys. Well, they hope that Davis will be okay. They're definitely light on the sympathy, that's for sure. But next up is Cody, who's in the, the city area. And Cody just, like, doesn't see Tartamon, I guess, and just stands there with, like, a kendo stance, whatever it is. And then he sees the Tartaman, and having the Digiego reliability, he stands his ground, and oh wait, no he doesn't, he just jumps off to the side, and once again Davis is left to handle it himself. At least Cody tried, though. Well, you've considered trying, and then he saw the problem. <laughs> they were just like, eh, maybe not. So, TK, Kari, and Cody haven't helped, that just leaves Yoli. Yoli's with Hawkman, of course, by the beach. There's a lake and also a beach, but does the lake not have a beach? Or is that not called a beach? I guess it's called a bank. My brain's just trying to wrap my head around there being both a lake and a beach that isn't on the lake. <laughs> For some reason, my, my brain's just like, how does that work? Even though it makes perfect sense. Wait, wouldn't the beach just be like the entire coastline? Yes. I'm so confused. They've really not split up the digital world well. No. <laughs> It's almost like it was an afterthought for this one episode. Maybe it was. Like, there'd be a lot more farmland than there would be beach, surely. And I've forgotten what area Davis even took, technically. No, Davis had the lake. Kari got the farm because uh, Davis lost um, rock, paper, scissors. Ah, uh, yeah. But wait, TK had, like, Pamo with a watering can. Yeah, TK went to help Kari. Oh, I see. That makes sense. I only watched these, like, six hours ago. <laughs> I've already forgotten them. Were you tired? Yes. <laughs> there we go. There's the culprit. But this episode was forgettable, to be fair. It kind of was, yeah. If you can't guess, Yoli didn't help either. No, Yoli hid. In a convenient canoe. Yoli canoe that it wasn't a good idea to intervene. You thought of one faster than I did. Are you on the boat with the puns? Are we going to be kayaking about a bunch of jokes now? <laughs> oh no, you took it too far. <laughs> One was enough. <laughs> the ship has sailed on these jokes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't think I can think of another one. Since everyone abandoned Davis in his time of need, he dies. And we say goodbye to Davis. <laughs> I wish. Rip, least favorite Digimon character. As long as Vmon lived, I'd be okay with it. Right? <laughs> yeah. Just give us Vmon and we're fine. Replace Davis with a second V-Mon. That'd be okay. V-Mon and V-Mon. But no, Davis and V-Mon end up on the edge of a cliff with Tortamon next to them. And it's a standoff because Tortamon's tired and they have nowhere to run. They are literally caught between a rock turtle and a hard place. And I guess the writers couldn't think of something smart for Davis to come up with because mm. Davis starts complaining about germs and asking Tortamon to wash his hands before he murders them. Right, which comes in later. Yeah, it's weird. Well, they had to figure out how that last scene was going to work out. Like, was that the best they could come up with, was germs? I mean, I don't know how else you, you could really resolve the random hand-washing that Tortamon does. Just gotta mention it now so it makes sense later. Yeah, it's, it's just so clunky. It is. Oh, it's very clunky, but it's because they, they cut something later. It's just really, really weird. It is quite odd. But yeah, after that, Vmon digivolves. Into X Vmon. He now has two letters. Yay! Twice the letter power. Hooray! His chest is like an X and a V, all at the same time. Wow! I do like X Vmon's design, though. It's pretty cool. It's just the same as, like, the armor digivolutions, just stretch out Vmon. But instead of armor, he gets, like, 
Wings and a horn still. That's pretty much XV Mon for you. So let's kick it up, starts playing, which is like the only good part of the whole episode. <laughs> XV Mon defeats Tartamon and throws him off the cliff using his V laser, which is clearly X shaped, but who cares? It's supposed to be X V laser, I think. But it's just V laser this time. Dub, yay! Just realise that Dub is just dumb with an M missing. Anyway, after this, Tartamon washes his hands because I guess he's cool with being chucked off a cliff. Are we going to talk about the scene that got cut here? <laughs> what was the scene that got cut? Tortamon randomly like pees and then they were like, well, we can't show that. So they just cut it and had Tortamon washing his hands for a random reason. I see. That's why I thought there was poop jokes or something in this episode. Yeah. That's silly. Yeah, it is silly. So they cut the urination part and they were just like, all right, you just randomly washed his hands. And then he left. It's like, all right, sure. It doesn't make much more sense than the original, but... There you go. This whole episode doesn't make sense. It's just Davis is an idiot and then Vimon digivolves anyway. <laughs> the episode. But at the end, Davis and X Vimon go back to the group and the group gives no sh because everyone hates Davis. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Just no one gives a toss. It's the best. Zero toss was given. Well done, Davis. Now X Vimon could do more work with the cleanup. <laughs> yeah, they're literally just like, cool! We have a Digimon with muscles and is bigger now. Have fun with that. And that's where it ends. <laughs> and then the best part of the episode, hands down, is the narrator at the end only mentioning TK's hypothesis about them needing to be in the digital world for a possibly important reason. Nothing about Davis or Vimon is mentioned. Just the one line that TK had, like, towards the middle of this episode. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's the only thing that matters. It's just like the dedicated almost a whole episode to Davis and Vimon, and even the show itself doesn't give a toss. Yeah, like I know that this episode, by the rules of the podcast, has to be a not filler because we have an evolution. But just based on that ending, it should be filler. We'll get to the filler or not filler question and we'll decide then. But are there any notes that we missed that you want to mention? Uh, there was one thing, it's pretty small, but when the... It's supposed to be Red Vegemon are helping clean up. There's a point where you see them like in the background and they're colored yellow instead of red, which is just a coloring error. But it's funny because in Digimon, that makes it a different Digimon, which is funny. But that's the only thing. Maybe they were just Vegemon. But they became Red Vegemon in the next scene. There could be one red Vegemon and lots of Vegemon. Nah, it was the same group. <laughs> they became They were yellow and then they became red. They kind of have a shift pattern. What's that mean? So all the Vegemon work for a bit, and then they come off shift, and then the red Vegemon go on, on shift. Possibly, yes, I guess that's true. Was that it, just colouring? Yeah, that was the only thing. Wow, this episode was bad. So who was your standout character? I mean, I kind of want to say Tortobon, just because Tortobon kind of chased Davis, and that was a bit cathartic. Cyber. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I kind of like v one as my standout character, just for that one line that you mentioned, where he kind of like points out Davis's weird logic of like, if I got you to evolve, that wouldn't make Gatuan like me. We didn't even go over like, Vimon wants to learn to dance to impress Gatuan or something. That's right. Vimon has like a fantasy of wanting to like dance with Gatuan because apparently Vimon's convinced that that's what Gatuan loves the most is dancing. Do any of the other Digimon ever have? romantic inclinations <laughs> towards any other Digimon. Mm, no. I think it's only ever Vimon that likes Gatamon, and that's like the only time it ever comes up of a Digimon having a crush. It's so weird. It is, yeah. It raises so many questions. <laughs> Wait, what are the questions? We must answer the questions. Do Digimon get into relationships? Do Digimon have like romantic preferences of species or Maybe? Do Beast, Digimon, and the like have genders still, or what? Well, they all have gender, they just don't have, like, well, I guess it's never really explained in Adventure, is it? No, because it's weird. <laughs> it was an odd decision. Oh, well. But yeah, my standout character was Davis, because he put his face on the screen most of the time. Just he was there the most. He forced himself upon me <laughs> for, like, 20 minutes. And he was bad for most of that time. So he definitely stood out for those reasons alone. So what was your favourite thing about the episode? 
I know it's hard to think of something likable. I, I kind of like that they took the time to think about, like, yeah, all of this destruction happened here. So, you know, it doesn't just magically fix itself. We have to kind of do something. Even though in the end they don't really do anything. I guess Cody feeds hungry Digimon, which is a little more helpful. But aside from that, not a lot happens. But I do like the idea that they at least showed they're in devastation and they kind of need help right now. Showing the the aftermath of what the Emperor's been doing. Like, it would have been better if there were just dark spires still up or something. And they had to get rid of those. But people being hungry and the place being a bit of a tip is okay, I guess. Actually, I prefer that. Because I think these creatures have a society and, like, lives that have been ruined. So I think it's nice that they took the time to repair it. Instead of just jumping straight into, like, oh, there's a new villain now. Or, oh, there's still towers up. Or, oh, there's still whatever. It's kind of just an excuse, I think, to use lots of the same Digimon that they've had on already. So they know how to animate them <laughs> and draw them. As for me, my favorite thing was just everyone bullying Davis, I guess. Because <laughs> I think he deserves it to a certain extent with how badly he behaved this whole episode. <laughs> That's fair. I think people are, like, really hard on Davis. But, yeah... He wasn't great this episode. No, he wasn't. So everyone just refused to help him, which I think is perfectly fair of them. So now, this might be tough. Was it filler or not filler? I mean, I know by the rules of the podcast, it's not filler because there was an evolution that was gained, but it really should be filler because... Aside from the evolution and TK's one throwaway line of, hey, there might be a reason why we're here, there's nothing going on in this episode. In my notes, I've just put begrudgingly <laughs> that I don't think it's filler. Just like, if we're going with, if Ash catches a Pokemon, that's not filler. It, it's only fair to sort of treat Digimon the same way. Right, yeah. So, for like the five seconds where Vmon Digivolves, it's not filler. <laughs> that saves the episode. I mean, we've had similar ones before with like DigiX and stuff. So yeah, I'll put it as not filler. Begrudgingly not filler, like you had in your notes. <laughs> Begrudging zero on the filler tally. And what are our overall thoughts? Boy, did this episode happen. Show was a mistake. Anime was a mistake. My notes just say absolutely dreadful episode. It was. It was really bad. Pretty much nothing redeeming about it. Vmon was okay. That's about it. Yeah, that's about it. Vmon was a voice of reason. But aside from that, yeah. Honestly, I'm impressed that Vmon can survive. Being Davis's part of Digimon. I know, you figure he would have lost all of his brain cells at this point. <laughs> he just turns into a Pokemon and starts going, V-Mon, V-Mon! V-Mon, V-Mon! V, V! But yeah, this episode was bad. Can we move on? Yeah, let's move on. Next up is The Superhero Secret. I should go a walking along. This is the song when they're walking along. Walking along song. Yeah, this is the walking along song. Step by step to that place somewhere over there. Take your time. It's not a race. Don't fall flat on your face. Don't jump too high or you'll be in space. What a place to be in space. Oh, we've already had place. You lose. Aww. I didn't know the rules of this game. That's not fair. You think I knew the rules of this game? I mean, you called a rule, so apparently you did. I made them up and said that I won. That's not fair. It is fair because I am the host. So, there is a Gligar sound. Brock goes, that's a Gligar. The title screen comes up saying the superhero secret. Woo! This is all less than a minute long. And then they're in a hole because Team Rocket dug a hole. Oh, they're in a hole now. Team Rocket was quick to this one. <laughs> they were like, all right, two minutes in and boom, we are already are trying to steal Pikachu. <laughs> 60 seconds in and they are in a hole. They're in a whole lot of trouble. <laughs> But yeah, they really are in trouble because Team Rocket threatened to drown them and start pouring water into the hole. Yeah, Jesus. They just were like, okay, we're going to just start filling this with water and spraying you with water cannons. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's actually really violent. Like, what the heck? Just like, yeah, they could quite easily get hypothermia or just drown. They're shooting them downward with like water cannons. So they're hitting them on the head. And then the hole is filling with water. So it's like, they're going to drown. What is wrong with you guys? Togepi starts swimming. Yeah, Togepi starts drowning. And it's like, no, 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 no. Not the Babu Pokemon. Not the Babu. But fortunately, there is a superhero here to save the day. And it is Glagor Man. 
Man, being a hero was rough before My Hero Academia came along, huh? They just all start tearing into him, just like, you can't be a superhero, superheroes aren't real. Yeah, he's actually trying to help them, and they're just like, you're a phony. Why are you in a costume? You suck. <laughs> it's so mean. It's just nasty. The only person that is nice to him is Misty, because Gligar Mans, Gligar saves Togepi from drowning. So Gligar Man tells Gligar to fight off Team Rocket, and Gligar does it. And so Team Rocket run away. And that's our first Team Rocket encounter of the day. Everyone is saved from the hole. From the whole lot of trouble. And they all have just a nice chat with Gligar Man. And Gligar Man gets out the Gligar Cycle. They drive off to the, the filler town, which I don't think gets a name. Nope. It's just filler town where Gligar Man lives. And Misty's impressed. Brock and Ash are kind of just like, oh, well, he, he's pretty cool. I like his Gligar. That's cool. And then on a regular cycle comes Latoya, who is the filler lady of the episode. <laughs> well, not even a lady, just girl. Young woman. That's what girl means. <laughs> lady, ma'am, miss. Sex object for Brock. Basically. But at least she's having none of it. She kind of leads him on a bit later, but it's Brock's bait for the episode, basically. It's so weird when you say Brock's bait. Well, that's basically what the girls are when they turn up in the show. It's just there for Brock to have a crush on. I guess. I, at first, I was glad that it was Gligar Man, because I, I was so sick of filler girls that Brock was just swooning over. But then there's this girl still anyway, so whatever. She asks about Gligar Man, and they're all just like, yeah, we saw Gligar Man. And then Latoya heads off to the city, and Brock wants to chase after her because it's a girl. I'll never see another one in my whole life, ever again. It's only the hundredth one I've fallen in love with. <laughs> so yeah, they head into this, this city and just wander around. And there's Gligar Mania everywhere. Because everyone's just obsessed. There's like stores, there's posters, there's merchandise, there's everything. And it's all dedicated to Gligar Man. So they, they pick one of these sort of toy stores to go into. By that I mean they are sort of just pushed in there. <laughs> I thought it was really funny, like that there were actual customers in the store because I was thinking like, oh, they're getting shoved in because no one really cares. And I was like, oh, no, he actually is kind of a hero to this place. Yeah, like, Gligar Man is very popular in this town. He's like the local hero. He's a proper superhero. So in this toy store, the young girl, who we find out is called Latoya again, because Brock calls her that, is in the toy store manning the, the till. And then Latoya's dad comes out as well. And it took me all of like five seconds to guess that this dad was Gligar Man. It's, it's ridiculous. It's like, well, that's him. That was easy. Yeah, just like same body shape, pretty similar voice. You can just tell that it's, it had to be him because they couldn't be bothered writing Ashiko having to actually search for Gligar Man. I, was, I thought there might be a twist or something like, oh, it's not actually Gligar Man. But no, it was Gligar Man. And so basically, Ash at this point makes the mistake of asking, who's Gligar Man? And so, wh whatever his name is. His true name can only be Gligar Man. So yeah, Gligar Man is like, is like, okay, I'll show you. Like, just TV drops from the ceiling. And they're just like, all right, we're going to watch a movie right here in the toy store. <laughs> it's just like this whole dramatization of like, of like a bad superhero movie. <laughs> it's just of Gligar Man saving and doing random things. Yeah, like this is just before the, the reveal that this dad is actually Gligar Man. Yeah, and it's funny because at the end of the movie, Ash is like, huh, that's weird. It looks nothing like the guy we saw. <laughs> the guy kind of like freaks out. And then that's when Ash realizes, oh, you're Gligar Man. <laughs> yeah, and then it all, it comes to light that he's actually Gligar Man because Gligar Man knew Misty's name already. He lets that slip. And we now know the secret identity of Gligar Man is Toy Store Owner Man. But Team Rocket followed them because they wanted revenge. And they now know the secret identity of Gligar Man is actually Gligar Man sto Store Owner, I guess. And they get really upset about that for some reason. I don't know, they're just annoyed that this... I guess fat slob in a cheap costume defeated them. Something about them being offended that he was like bad at dress up, I guess. Because <laughs> they're usually like the masters of disguise. And so it's like they take offense to it. 
but Jesse takes on the role of supervillain, which is the best because I love her costume with like the black horns and stuff. Yeah, her costume is really cool. James and Meowth, not so much. <laughs> yeah, they're just metapods <laughs> for some reason. Giant metapods. <laughs> of all Pokemon, why metapods? Because why not? Uh, it would be so much better if they had like Meowth costumes. So, like, James was dressed as Meowth, and then Meowth had a Meowth costume on top as well. <laughs> it would be so dumb, but I would love it. The biggest waste of a costume ever. So, yeah, it goes back to Ash and Co. with Gligor Man and Latoya. And they're in the elevator going down to the Gligor Cave, or whatever it was called. Gligor Man takes, you know, them to his mansion. And I love this because it's he calls it his Gligar Mansion. And I love that. <laughs> But yeah, he takes them into the, I guess, basement? Just like the secret base part of it. It's shockingly high tech. Like, I was totally expecting, like, the costume was hung up on a coat hanger off on the side. Like, that's it. But it was actually, like, a really high tech. He takes it seriously, clearly. It was very futuristic, very nice, and very, like, yeah. He tells the story of how it just started off as, like, a, a marketing campaign for the store. But he slowly actually became... Gligor Man. That's a proper capitalist origin story, isn't it? <laughs> kind of, yeah. It's like, I did it to make money. <laughs> but then I actually became a superhero. He was just doing it as a goofy thing to sell toys, and then he realized, you know what? You know it would be even better than selling toys? Actually helping people. He's not very good at it, but he tries, which is nice. He has, he has a good heart. Gligar does most of it. And then Gligar Man just kind of takes the credit usually. But that's totally fine by me because Gligar Man is very cool. He's he's very endearing and very nice. He's one of the most fun filler characters we've had in a long time. He's definitely memorable at least. Yeah, definitely. He stands out. Gligar Man explains that he's getting old a bit and he doesn't really have anyone to, to take over if he like can't fight crime himself anymore. So Brock's suggestion is just send him to a retirement home and he can become Gligar Man so he can look after his like mansion and his daughter. Yeah, it's probably like the most terrible thing Brock has ever said before. It's awful. <laughs> It's like, give me your daughter and your money and you can go to a retirement home. That's nice, right? No, Brock, it's terrible. Fortunately, Latoya does just completely shut him down. Yes, yes. Just like, oh, you're so funny, Brock. And then Brock cries and cries and cries. He deserves it. I think this is the first time we've seen him actually cry at rejection, though. Misty has a really mean line here, but considering Brock just said the most terrible thing, he kind of deserves it. When Latoya mentions, like, why is he crying and stuff, Misty just goes, don't worry, he's used to having his heart stomped on. It's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> like, ouch. He sets himself up for it, though. He does, yeah. If you keep falling in love at first sight, you're going to get your heart broken every day. So, with all this going on, they hear the Gligor whistle go off because someone's or something's under attack. And it is Gligar Man's toy store that is under attack from Team Rocket or Jesse and the Metapods. It actually sounds like a really good band name, like Jesse and the Metapods. Jesse and the Metapods. I would so listen to a band called Jesse and the Metapods. But anyway, they are holding up the store because they want to just get Gligar Man to come out. And it works. So Gligar Man shows up and basically, what, Team Rocket just kind of kick his butt a bit even with Gligar being there because it ends up they've taken some of the sort of the toy store staff hostage in Metapod costumes why Metapod why evil Jesse why 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 Spinarak why everything what is happening this episode is so weird oh yeah because Meowth gets a giant well not even giant just a Spinarak mech that fits a Meowth <laughs> Yep, it's just a giant spinner rack. For some There's no theme here either, which is weird. Like, it's Metapod, spinner rack, and then Jesse dressed as, like, an evil, like, empress or something. I don't know if the theme's, like, supposed to be bad costumes or something. I don't know. It is a weird one. Um, but the spinner rack mech webs up Ash and Gligar Man, and Gligar is just fighting. Gligar goes after uh, James. Because I remember James running around in the background screaming with Gligar on his face. It's like, oh, get it off me. Oh, uh, it's so good. So they're out now in like the, the towns, the main town street. 
uh, webbed up on this statue and Jesse's now just like, everyone will see who you are, Gwaga man. And at this point, we get a dramatic reveal that there is another Gwaga superhero that is, I don't know how to say this. Gly girl. I don't think that really suits the, the Gly girl man voice, but I can't think of another one to do. So, Gly girl. Gly girl. <laughs> Gly girl. I can't do it, that voice. So, Gly girl asks for Glygar's help, and Glygar obliges and cuts them down from the statue. And they chase chase off Team Rocket. The Spinarak mech goes haywire, chases after them, and explodes. So Team Rocket blasts off again. So the Glygar gang saved the day. Yay! Hooray! Ash's contribution to this was to say, "Go Pikachu!" And then Pikachu did all the work, basically. That's how Ash battles. He just says, go Pikachu! And hopes for the best. <laughs> and Pikachu didn't do anything too, by the way. No attacks. Pikachu literally just ran around the Spinarak mech's legs until the legs got all tangled up and then it fell. Pikachu just knows what to do at this point. He's done it so many times. Pikachu just like looks and is like, I might as well be a Digimon. Jesus. I do like Pikachu a lot in this episode. Just every time he says Pika in one way or another, it's funny. Like when the the show in the film earlier... The screen comes down and Pikachu just like, Pika? Then it just cuts to black. <laughs> it's amazing. But anyway, they've saved the day and everyone works out that Latoya is actually Gly Girl. Except for Brock, because Brock is stupid. Well, it's weird too, because when Ash and Gly Girl Man are taken hostage and they see Gly Girl for the first time, obviously the dad's like, that's my daughter. And then, but Ash is like, who is that? And then at the end, when they're talking to Gly Girl and Gly Girl Man, Brock has that comment of like, oh, Gly Girl Girl's Latoya. And then they're all like, really, Brock? And I'm like, Ash, you didn't even know. <laughs> you liar. They worked it out in the end, at least. Yes. Yeah, they did. And the happy music plays and they walk off into the sunset as they always do, because they could only travel at night, apparently. <laughs> always leave at sunset. It basically just ends with them deciding to become a Gligar superhero team because the dad doesn't want to retire. And that's it. And so, who is your standout character? Uh, Gligar man, because he's just really fun and nice and he's a good character. He's got good humor and he's just, he's just a good character. He's fun to watch. He's like one of the most interesting and entertaining side characters we've had in a long time. Instead of just like, usually the filler characters are just very boring and just there to go, look at the Pokemon of the week. Yeah, exactly. It's just like, look at this animation of the Pokemon. Isn't that cool? Here's a fun fact about Hoppip. Beep boop, I am filler character. But Gligar Man was much more fun. If anything, he was probably more fun to watch than Gligar. <laughs> kind of stole the show from the Pokemon for a change. Yeah, Gligar didn't really do anything. Gligar was just kind of there. Gligar was fun in the battle, so at least. And that's kind of like all he needs to do, which is fair enough. And I'd agree. Gligar Man was the best. Yeah. What was your favourite thing about the episode? Definitely just at the end when, um... Gligar, like, is, like, sent to attack. Gligar just attacks James. And then just for the rest of, like, the entire confrontation, you just hear James in the background running, screaming because Gligar is attached to his face. It's really funny. You can see him, like, flailing in the background. It must be, like, a solid two minutes or something where that's happening. It just keeps going. It's so good. Honestly, I think my favourite thing was definitely just everything that Gligar Man had. So like the Gligar whistle and Gligar cycle. I was just like, when he pulls a motorbike out from the bushes, just like, yes, <laughs> this is the best superhero <laughs> parody ever. Yes. Honestly, just like turns up in a tree with a Gligar, saves the day and then, oh, I have a motorcycle now <laughs> and drives off. The motorbike is like the best superhero vehicle. Nothing beats a bike. No, it does not. Wait, so does a Gly girl just have, like, her usual bike? <laughs> I guess until they get her a nicer one. So I get, like, the Gly girl tricycle. <laughs> it's just a purple tricycle. <laughs> <laughs> Why a tricycle? Well, she can't have a motorbike because Gly girl man has the, a motorbike. So it needs to be worse somehow. It could be a scooter. She could have the Gly girl scooter. <laughs> a push scooter or a powered scooter? No, it should be a power scooter, because that's lame enough. <laughs> okay. 
but it should go faster than motorcycle just for the lols. Anyway, <laughs> was this episode filler or not filler? It was sadly filler. It was fun filler though. There's a funny thing with these two episodes where it's like, you're sad that this one's filler and then you're upset that the other one is not filler. It's because one of these is good. So what were the overall thoughts you had? It was fun in a way I can't really explain because I'm tired, but like it just had good humor and it was just fun fun characters are great rock's a little weird because rock's always a little weird yeah it, it was just fun i like pretty much everything about it it was really fun the only bit that drags it down is brock being brock which is a shame but at least gligo man made for a good episode yes he did it was fun very fun and even Gly girl embracing her dad's weirdness was like really heartwarming he already had the costume there for her true but still at least she's buying into the, the family business. I'm sure they'll be quite successful with all the new line of Gly Girl merchandise. Now they get to sell girl versions of it. That's how most toys become popular, isn't it? Anyway, I think we can move on. Now it's time for Mono A Mono, where we attempt to compare these episodes. So, who was your Monster of the Week? So this is hard, because Gly Girl didn't really do anything but then vmon didn't i guess if you can't pick between them pick tortomon <laughs> all right it's tortomon mvp for chasing davis <laughs> he's most integral to the plot good <laughs> there we go there nice easy pick there for you yep <laughs> i'm gonna pick glygar though because he's purple he's purple and teal interesting color combination plus it's just an interesting design just like Let's take a bat and give them a scorpion tail, make them purple. We have Gligar. Because scorpions weren't scary enough. Let's give it wings. Now it can fly and scratch you as well. I actually quite like, I don't know how it's pronounced. Gliscor? Gliscor, that's it. I like the evolution as well. Yeah, the evolution's really cool. It gets scarier. It does. It looks very mean. It's just like, let's make it bigger and make it a less cute color than purple. So yeah, I quite liked seeing Gligar, and I was excited as soon as like the episode started with the Gligar sound. Jumps from the trees all majestic-like. Gligar's cool. Yeah. I don't know how Brock immediately can identify and give us fun facts about every Pokemon ever. That's true, yeah, Gligar just raced across the trees, and Brock was like, that's a Gligar! Like, what? How do you know that? Just Brock actually has a Pokedex embedded in his brain or something. <laughs> he sees it for two seconds, he immediately knows what it is. Brock's a true superhero. He's like a, a pokey cyborg. <laughs> Next question. Who was worse, Ash or Davis? Davis. Davis. Moving on. We spent enough time dissing Davis in the discussion, I think. Which storyline did you prefer and why? I, I prefer definitely the, the Pokemon one because it was just fun. Even though it's it's the filler episode, it was, it was better than the not filler episode, which is saying something about Digimon. It didn't follow the, the typical filler sort of plot as well either. There wasn't like plot relevance. You don't need to watch this episode to know like the overall plot of the this Pokemon season. But it's like it was still fun and it was it was good. It was fun to see sort of Pokemon's parody of superheroes as well. Like it felt like the writers were having fun writing it instead of it just being a run of the mill one again. So yeah, I think we both preferred Pokemon there. Yeah, we did. Were there any notable similarities? Similarities? I've got one. Both of the episodes had forests and cities in them. That is true. <laughs> Some similar settings and backdrops. Yeah, that's about it. I don't think there were any mechs in Digimon. No. Oh, characters fell into water at the bottom of, like, deep pits as well. Did they? Yeah, because they fell in the chasm. And Ash and Co. fell in the hole. You are on to something. Wow, there's there's falling in both shows into water. Weird. Wow. Blew my mind, man. Conspiracy. But what does it mean? I don't know. Probably nothing. <laughs> both XVMon and Gligerman had wings. Yes, there were wings involved. Winged characters were introduced. <laughs> I think I'm just clutching at straws so we can start with similarities. <laughs> so were there any like major differences you want to bring up? You go first. Mine is just that Gligar Man was a superhero and Davis was a super zero. <gasps> Got him! I stole that joke directly from the show. <laughs> Don't ruin the illusion, Stevie! 
what you think I can be funny on my own? Yeah, I guess either of us being funny is inherently suspicious. <laughs> I haven't really got much else written down. <laughs> I'm always bad at the differences one. I'm sure we can get one more. Let's see here. Oh, I've got one. You don't really see vehicles in the digital world at all. And then Pokemon is just full of bicycles and motorcycles and stuff. Yeah, that's true. Which means that Davis gets to run everywhere, which sucks for Davis, so that's good for us. Davis can't just hop on a digibike and then run for his life. Can you think of one one difference you'd like to, to say? Sorry, Gligar is purple and Vimon is blue. <laughs> Well observed. I am a smart. I never considered that before. <laughs> they were different colors. They are such drastically different shows, and I didn't realize till now <laughs> the monsters were different colors. Different colors? What? Wow. Um, I did think of another one. What? You don't really get, like, filler human characters in Digimon, but in Pokemon you got two this time. Oh, okay, yeah. You don't get filler people, you get filler Digimon usually in Digimon. You don't have a, a tag-along like you do in Pokemon. But Digimon are sentient, don't they count? Because they talk. Totemon was barely sentient. That's true, okay, Tortomon doesn't count, but everyone else does. He rolled a lot but then washed his hands. <laughs> so now I'm questioning, like, is Tortomon actually really intelligent but just can't communicate? Is he trapped within his own body that can't speak English or whatever language it is they speak? <laughs> yes, maybe his data's, like, all messed up. That would be awful, just, like, if Tortomon can think clearly and understand everyone but can't communicate back. Poor, poor Tortomon. He can't even say Tortomon. Torto. Tortomon. So, which episode... Do you think deserves the point and why? Pokemon, because it was worth watching. Are you saying that Digimon wasn't worth watching? Yes. But if we didn't watch it, we wouldn't know about how he got X V Bon. It doesn't matter, and we would just know the same thing in the next episode. It's not one worth watching more than once. <laughs> no, I don't even think it's worth watching, because it's like if you saw in the next episode, oh, Davis has X V Mon now, you would be like, huh, that's weird. But you wouldn't really care. It'd just be like, cool, he's got x Beam on now. <laughs> I suppose. The recap next episode would probably do the same job. But that would be so cheating. Because that would then make the next episode not filler instead of this one. But this one just needs to not exist. And then, then the next one can be the not filler. That's fine. I'm fine with that. <laughs> Riding off the back of last episode was really good. This episode of Digimon was awful in comparison. And on its own. It's just awful. Don't do Davis episodes, please. Stop it. <laughs> They're not good. They are bad. Just like Davis. We'll give you a Vmon episode, but it can't have Davis in it as a main character. Well, I kind of want now to just watch Adventure Zero 2, but remove every scene with Davis in, see what that's like. Anyway, that now makes the score 13-9 to Pokemon. So Pokemon has a substantial lead at the moment. Next time, we'll be discussing the 23rd episodes, Genesis of Evil and Mild and Woolly. Those are very different titles. <laughs> Those are very different titles. Mm. Anyway, if you want to get in touch, just tweet at us, email at us, or jump in our Discord to chat at us. And of course, a massive thank you to my lovely co-host today, Chisai. Hello. Where can the people find you? Oh, sorry. Where can people find you? <laughs> Where can the people find you? <laughs> just look! My name up on Tumblr! <laughs> All the links to our stuff are in the show notes, including the Moncast Patreon. Uh, so a big thank you to every one of our patrons, including Cheesei236. Hey! Oh, is that you? It's me! James B, John C, Nicholas, and Irving G. So thank you for supporting the show. And we are still really close to our first milestone where we get a movie episode each month. So please have a look and support if you can. Yeah! And until next time, bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. How could this happen to me? I made my mistakes. I know where to run. Yeah. I hate Davis so much. Insert music so, here. Yay. He's not the brightest bulb in the in the digi bulb bunch. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know where I was going what? with that. <laughs>
He's not the brightest light bulb in the box of light bulbs. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that. <laughs> Is that where the joke goes? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I can't think of a better one, so sure, why not? My brain Davis's- ad-libbed that, and like every step just made it more and more confusing. <laughs> it's like, he's not bright. Okay, uh, what's bright? Light bulbs. Okay, what are light bulbs in? Uh, digiboxes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we're on a roll. <laughs> so. But yeah, Vimon, like, even though they sort of, like, change how he says things, the things he say... Wow, that grammar. Just halfway through the sentence, of Rain just went, wait, that's not right. <laughs> right. Yeah, like... Glygarmon... Glygarmon? <laughs> Glygarmon! <laughs> I, I should have seen that mistake coming a mile away. 